week later up here on our Alpha Rack Plus plot after we mowed it. We mowed it last Friday and today is the 22nd and uh, it has really grown in really good. Now that's where this basket's going to come into play and these gloves. We're going to walk around and these big clumps of water grass we're going to pull out by the roots and uh, it's you know we won't get them all, but if, the more we get, the less herbicide we'll have to spray on this field. And <clears throat> because right now, as tall as some of this grass is, I don't think that herbicide would really get the job done. And if we can not have to use it, that's a plus. So it won't take too long. And like I said, we'll just start randomly walking down here and um, pulling this grass out throwing it in the basket and taking it over to the side. So uh, without any further to do, I'll pan this down so you can see the non-typical back side, which is probably more pleasant than his front side. Oh, uh, well, I'll pan it down there. And I'm going to start pulling these weeds out and pulling them in the basket. And the purpose of the basket is so I, when I get the weeds, I don't have to, like say, yeah, here's a pretty good grass, and that came right out, so uh, we got the roots and all, and all you have to do is just take your time, it's not rocket science, nobody's making you do it, and you pull those big clumps out, you got the root, you didn't use the herbicide, and it's just saving you a little money because you can't do nothing on a rainy day anyway. Uh, so it's a win-win situation. And like I said, when you can get a, you pull out a clump of grass like that, throw it in the basket, that's what's going to make that alfalfa want to grow that much better. And your, um, your whole crop is going to be better off because you just hand weeded it and you didn't put it under any stress. And I'm not probably going to get them all, I'll claim that. But you're, if the more effort you put in, the more you'll get. So I'll keep picking at them. And like I said, you need that basket, because that's what's going to get them off the field. Okay, you just get in an area, and just take your time. I've watched people sit on, in a, in a Facebook thing, and play a computer game all day long. Well, this is just a 3D, 3D computer game. And like I said, uh, we got a heck of a stand of alfalfa and chicory in here. And now we got very little broadleaf sticking up. But we do got some broadleaf or some grass. Now this is real important. It's a broadleaf weed. You see where the mower clipped it off. But it still has plenty of regrowth on it. That's why you either come in and spray a herbicide on after you mow, or you can do what we're doing, taking the whole root system out. But, because you mowed it off, there's the new regrowth. And that would be when you would want to put your herbicide on it. You've killed this much off, now the herbicide would get on this much. But you got to wait a few days, because it took a few days to, to start the regrowth on it. So let's keep pulling weeds. You see why that basket is essential. We've got it clear full. We'll take it off over into the timber and dump it off the plot. But without the basket, we'd have to keep walking back and forth or trying to throw it to the perimeter, which is, can be a considerable distance. Well, we've been at it now for five hours. God couldn't have gave us a better day. Could have gave us a little breeze, but the humidity's down. The heat's way down. Thank God, because I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't be up here if it was in the 90s, uh, sun bearing down on you. But uh, I draw on the same willpower that the Bill Dixons that made that beautiful uh, picture carved in the wood for me, and that beautiful log that the Jeff Dillons carved for me. Those men, they got skills. All you seen here was just strong back and weak mind pulling weeds. 
But what I want to get across to you, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. The first weed's the toughest weed. But do it on cloudy days, after a rain, when the ground is moist and the weeds come out, and when you don't have sun. That will keep your endurance going uh, tremendously. Now let's go, I'll take you over here and count the barrels of, or baskets of weeds that we pulled off of here. We got basically one pile, two, three, four, five, six. And over here, we had probably one, two, and I guess three, one, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bushel baskets over here. So we got this pretty well gleaned out. And we did it the cheapest way you're going to do it. And uh, that was with uh, manual labor. So a neighbor must be over there spraying or pesticides or something flying pretty low to the ground as you can hear it uh, feels looking really good from last week after we mowed it that chicory resurged it's you know a lot of work but it's worth every penny of it here we are this is uh, June 23rd now you've seen us mow this somewhat undesirable clover field uh, last Friday, which was on the 15th, so here we are a week later. And I could do a little better observation of getting some of those weeds cut off. We've got a 100% chance of rain coming in tomorrow night and Monday. So what my plan is, is to set this grasses and these broadleaf weeds even farther back I want to mow this down because it's the herbicide unless I put it on real strong it would probably burn the clover because there's just too much infestation of the grasses and the broadleaf and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mow this down tighter hopefully the clover will reassert faster than the grasses this time and then I will spray it for broadleaf and uh, the grass, basically water grass. Too much of it in here to uh, even entertain about pulling it out like I did yesterday. So I'm gonna show you what we got. As you can see that clover right there, it's almost as tall as that boot, that's 10 inches. Now that did a lot of growing in last week. There's some of the chicory that we put in here. But you can also see the broadleaf, or the, the, like the water grass that's in here. And it's just, it's insurmountable. You'd never be able to hand pull that. Yeah, my main goal right now is for you YouTube viewers that fall under this umbrella of unfortunacy of having the wheat take over your clover. It means more to me to see if we can resurrect this. And then, if you come across this threshold in life in your efforts of food body, you know you still can uh, make it happen. Now, we can always come in here and tear it out in a couple months, you know, at the end of uh, July or 1st of August, and go in with a winter annual, and then replant in the fall, I mean in the spring next year. But I'm going to try to stay the course for myself and for you that have this same problem and maybe we can learn right along together. I don't know. So I'm going to get the mower. I got that little mower set as low as it, as it can mow. But I want to cut it right down to the ground. And hopefully that will stimulate the new growth of the clover.
mower up a little over an inch on the gauge wheels. I'm going to put a stake in this ground so we know where we're making. That's 48 inches wide and basically what we are. Six foot. We got one swipe through there. That's right at six foot. So far, our learning, we will come back and see what the effect of that real tight crop was compared to what we raised it up. And I'll mark this so I know the center line. So when I come back, all we have to do is to be able to grade our attempts to resurrect this. Typical flagging tape, hoop chains and all. And when we come back down here, we'll have a straight line. We'll know we're right in the center of that, and we'll see what the result of that real tight mowing was later. So we'll mow on up to here. See the clover here in the unmowed area where we raised the mower there's still clover and where we had it lower to the lowest setting it's almost non-existent I ain't worried about that I'm trying all I'm trying to do like I said try to bring this crop back online well there you go we got it all mowed off again I was almost tempted about going up and getting some seed broadcasted it on these bare spots. But, well, now that we can see the bare spots better, uh, but I think I'll just let it go until we get another growth period. Now, I'm going to take you over to this other clover plot and show you the results of mowing and applying herbicide. And uh, so let's wander over here and take a look at this. Oh, by the way, when you plant your white tail clover, it's recommended to plant it in uh, low ground where it holds moisture. And I want to show you something. <laughs> That's pushing my thumb down in there as far as it'll go. That's pretty moist. Now, as we stand on this clover field, which is seven years old and uh, you can see where the herbicide worked on the broadleaf weeds and probably the rest max worked on the grasses now we applied this with a sprayer we went over it real diligently and you can see the yellowing of the weeds and uh, that's what we wanted we mowed it, we let it set, and we came back and every, you know, when we had an infestation of weeds, we gave it a drink of uh, a rest max and slay. And you can see it did the job. The clover is growing right in there. And you see how the clover is still growing, but it killed the broadleaf weed. So that's good results of your herbicide management. And like I said again, I hope these videos help somebody. I, I'm no more expert than the next guy. And we're just out here trying to create a better habitat for all wildlife. And in doing so, that's my reward. Uh, thumbs down, thumbs up, middle fingers up, middle fingers down. I really don't care. I own the land. I'm already ahead of the game.
So if I can manage it, I'll win one way or the other. Well, here it is, the 24th day of June. Now what we're going to do, we mowed that new elf or clover field yesterday. And there's plenty of bald spots in there where nothing's growing. So I know it's out of the floor mat of the t planting prime times. But we got a lot of moisture down there. So we're going to go down there and just throw some seed on where the bare spots are and uh, see if we can get some germination with the moisture and the heat that will follow. And uh, it's going to rain again today. I know the prime date was March 1st to May 15th and then again on August 1st and uh, September 15th. But that's in ideal conditions and apparently we didn't have that. And you can see and here we got thunder around us and it's the 24th day so we're going to take this seed that was in the bag wasn't doing any good sitting in the bag we'll go down and overseed some of those bare spots down there yeah now that we're down here on the be uh, clover field I'm going to show you these bare spots where like I say the seed w wasn't growing in the bag and there's nothing growing in the bare spots so we really don't got anything to lose let's pan around here see there's minuscule Lots and lots of bare dirt. Lots of bare dirt. And you couldn't tell that with that weed crop on there and that grass. But if we overseed this possibly, let it rain in, maybe some of these bare spots might germinate because like I said, right now we really don't have anything to lose. We got some blue hands out of that. We I'm probably I don't know my probably half a pound or so that we spread on there and like I said it's on there now and if it gets rained in and germinates great I have no clue if this is going to work or not but I do know one thing if it does we win if it doesn't we tried it, uh, but the clover is in there and maybe like I said there was nothing growing on those bare spots so if we get one <laughs> one clover per square foot growing there, it's better than what we had. It, uh, and like I said, it wasn't going to grow in that bag. And I can always buy a new seed if I when it comes time to replant if I choose to. And so, uh, but I'm, my main goal is to share this and try to help fellow food plotters along uh, when they have a situation like this. And uh, if we can make it work. More power to us. Well, that's it from the non-typical down here on June 24th. It's rain on the way.